In today's video, we have a lot of information to go over, some uh, interesting things happening around the NHL. We're going to talk about some potential player movement or something between the Philadelphia Flyers, Montreal Canadiens, and some other members of the 2018 World Junior Hockey Club have been waiting on the investigation results. Uh, I'm not sure if anything's actually coming about, but there's some interesting details online. Uh, we also want to take a look at a few other details from the Professional Women's Hockey League. A big moment coming soon for Nathan McKinnon. Uh, some interesting news on Kasperi Kapanen and more around the league. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have uh, some interesting news to take a look at today and some odd things going on with some NHL player social media, which has gotten a lot of uh, people uh, kind of buzzing tonight and talking about what this all might mean and what might be happening, etc. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. First up, though, before we get into any of the news today, I just want to acknowledge uh, an actual uh, moment in hockey history, and it's, it's not a good moment. It's a very tragic moment, unfortunately, but it's the 12th anniversary today of the uh, very... Uh, tragic event that took place over in Russia when we saw um, uh, an entire team, uh, the locomotive team, uh, which had some former NHL players and some Canadian coaches on there, um, unfortunately had a plane crash and uh, 44 total people in the hockey world perished that day. It was a very, very sad day. And I mean, with the amount of travel you get within the sports world, that's when you think about it, I guess it's kind of amazing you don't see it happen more, and thankfully it doesn't, because uh, obviously that's it was a rough, rough day across the hockey world. Um, you know, head coach Brad McCrimmon, who's Canadian, uh, Brad McCrimmon, well respected hockey guy, uh, beloved in his community amongst all his teammates, an absolute beast when he played on the blue line himself. Uh, he had just gotten hired uh, to be the head coach for the team. I uh, was on their way to their very first game of the season because the KHL season always starts earlier than the NHL. And uh, he hadn't technically coached yet for that team, but had gone through, you know, training camp and everything in preseason. And they were on their way to the first uh, game when this all happened, when the, the plane crashed. So uh, we also saw, besides Brad McCrimmon, of course, uh, some of the players that were Russian that were uh, connect connected previously to the NHL. A lot of you would remember would be like uh, Pavel Dimitra, uh, Igor Korolev. Alex Karpatsa, Ruslan Saleh, and a bunch of others. Like I said 44 total people passed away that day. Very tragic, unfortunate series of events. Um, so thankfully, this type of thing doesn't happen often. And with the amount of travel in the sports world, it's, it's uh, we're lucky that it doesn't. Um, but it's already the 12th anniversary of that uh, unfortunate situation that took place over in Russia. Uh, on to today's news. Uh, we got some news today regarding Nathan McKinnon. He's going to be having a, a historic moment here. His uh, junior number, which was number 22, is going to be retired by the Halifax Mooseheads coming up on the 22nd of September. So 22 on 22. Uh, it's going to be their home opener for the season. Uh, of course, Nathan McKinnon had a a really, like, really, really good junior career there. Uh, obviously, went first overall in his draft year. They won a Memorial Cup in 2013. Um, obviously, this is going to be part of the kickoff of the 30th anniversary of the franchise in Halifax for the Moosehead. So they have a whole series of events planned to celebrate and um, you know to celebrate the franchise and all the success they've had over the years. But certainly, uh, McKinnon's uh, junior number being retired is going to be a big moment for him. And I'm sure it's going to be a packed house and big community, especially where he, you know, grew up in the area as well. So, you know, he was fortunate that way with Junior that he get to play um, pretty much in his backyard there. So, good moment coming there for for Nate uh, on September 22nd. Uh, the we get some more signings confirmed today uh, by the uh, Professional Women's Hockey League. The Montreal team and the Boston team both confirmed their first three signings. Of course, uh, no big surprises here. But this was already in the rumor mill. But the Montreal franchise confirmed they've signed. Canadian team captain Marie Philippe Poulin, as well as Canadian starting goaltender Anne Renee Debien and Laura Stacy. So, of course, they get three Canadian Olympians, and the Boston team gets some American Olympians and Hillary Knight. They've also signed uh, Megan Keller and Aaron Frankel. So, some uh, some great players there getting their spots secured in the new uh, PWHL. Uh, we still have to hear, I think, from the New York team. And then I said, uh, then we have the draft coming up on September the 18th. It's going to be interesting to see 
where things go from there. Uh, a couple of signs that came in late last night when I did last night's video. Uh, we There was speculation that Morgan Frost and the Philadelphia Flyers were nearing a, uh, a, a contract signing that was right around a $2 million mark. Well, that did get confirmed uh, just shortly after recording. So uh, the details of that was a two-year deal. Valued at $2.1 million per season for Morgan Frost, so $4.2 million total value. Uh, obviously, that's a nice raise for him. It allows him to continue to bet on himself, get better, uh, and certainly, you know, uh, he'll still be an RFA with Arbright's at the end of that contract. So a uh, pretty good signing for Morgan Frost. And then out of nowhere last night, we get the huge extension between the Ottawa Senators and Jake Sanderson, uh, which came as said later in the evening. I knew that something that they were working on, there was no... Uh, question I had already seen the speculation that the team wanted to get him locked up hopefully sometime before the season started uh, of course he was entering the final year of his entry level um, contract of course Jake Sanderson came out of North Dakota and was a terrific rookie last year an absolutely stud defenseman um, really showed that he can be a top pair D for sure um, and it's going to be one of the game's bright young blue liners uh, so he gets an eight-year contract just over 64 million dollars 8.05 aav i think a good comparable for him if in case you're not familiar with him because i've seen a variety of opinions on social media today a lot of people really saying oh it's so so much money like i don't think you understand how good this kid is like he's an absolute stud and he was the senator's top defenseman last year no doubt i know the sens haven't been the most you know, exactly the top defensive team or anything, so maybe the bar's not as high as you'd like it to be, but still, the fact that he stepped in as a rookie and that he skates like the win, he's incredibly smart. The anticipation on him is phenomenal. Great first pass, can work on the power play, killed penalties. He just he did it all, and he was just an absolute minute muncher back there. Um, he will be the team's number one defenseman long term, there's no doubt. Uh, and he will be well worth that money. And if, even for those who might think it's too rich in a year or two's time, I have no doubt they'll look at it and say it's a steal with the cap going up. They've got their, their full young core locked up, you know, between Kachuk and Timmy Stutzla, Josh Norris, Drake Batherson, and the forward group. Then you got Shabbat and uh, Sanderson, Corpus Allo on the back end. Uh, they've got these guys all. Uh, you know, eight million or less, and they're all locked up. You know, anywhere from you know like four to seven more years. So, to me, with the cap going up in that time frame as well, um, they're going to have a few other players they got to look after. But they're all kind of, you know, not as high profile. They're going to have to obviously figure out something for Shane Pinto. Um, you know, Chickering's going to need a new deal in two years. But like other than that, they're pretty well set. So they're going to be in great shape. And I th- honestly have no doubts that he will he will grow into this contract, and it's going to be. Um, a very solid, good deal here for Sanderson and the Sens. Uh, we get news out of Philadelphia as well. Besides the Frost contract, there's also word that Bob Murray, the former GM of the Anaheim Ducks, uh, is expected to join the Philadelphia Flyers as well as a senior advisor. They've got a lot of players there, former players and alumni with the, with the Flyers that are already in senior advisor roles, and they've added even more after uh, Keith Jones and Danny Breer took over. So Murray joining the fold there. Um, they've got uh, quite a large group that they're working with. Uh, some not great news on Kasperi Kapanen. Uh, apparently over in Finland, he's kind of gotten himself in trouble here. Apparently he's been suspected of what they called aggravated drunk driving. So I've seen the just the news just broke. The team in the St. Louis Blues, who he plays with, just found out today. There are statements from the player as well as as the uh, the team. Doug Armstrong put out a statement saying that they just learned of the situation involving Casper Kapanen. They're disappointed uh, to find out what happened, uh, but they certainly hope and they're confident that he'll use better judgment in the future and will uh, take the necessary steps to remedy the situation. And Kapanen himself put out a statement saying that he apologizes to his family and friends and the team uh, for uh, lapse in judgment and making a poor choice there. Uh, but I know some of the laws over in Finland are a little bit different, and then uh, we see North America as well. I'm not sure exactly what kind of stiff penalties he'll be facing, but, yeah, that happened about a month ago, I guess, so it's just kind of getting into the news cycle here now. But, um, yeah, Kappen to get himself in some hot water over in Finland for not making some good choices. Uh, we also seen some speculation today that uh, Phil Castle, who we know is still an unrestricted free agent, uh, might be in line for a potential reunion with the former team that he's won a Stanley Cup with. And it's not Vegas. It might be possibly going back to Pittsburgh. I mean, at this point, it might have to be a, 
either a one-year contract under a million bucks or maybe a PTO. I'm not sure, but there is some talk after he's put out the uh, information through Elliot Friedman the other day uh, with Fried saying that uh, Kessel's made it known that he's not too worried about the Ironman streak anymore. He just wants to be on a team. He loves the game, still has lots of fun, and wants to keep playing, and he understands that he may not necessarily play every single game and is not worried about the streak at all. So with that in mind, if a team like Pittsburgh, who I know, you know, might uh, have, you know, potentially some openings that, like, that they might want to add a veteran. Uh, I mean, obviously, cap wise, it might be tricky to do. So they might see some other subsequent moves come from it if they decided to sign them. But there is apparently interest and potential for a reunion there. So we'll see if that comes to be or not. Um, a couple of things as well around the NHL when it comes to some trades. I know one Montreal, I wouldn't, this is not like a serious trade rumor or something we're going to see immediately or anything, but I know Eric Engels, who works for Sportsnet and covers the Montreal Canadiens, was uh, recently appeared on uh, Tony Marinero's podcast um, talking about some of the things about the Habs, of course, which is what they do. And uh, they were talking about Jordan Harris, and Engels made mention of uh, Jordan Harris having some pretty good value. And he, he sees him as being an interesting young player because Montreal has accumulated a lot of young defensemen. Uh, they have a lot there, and they have a few veterans still around, and there's more young defense coming that are not even in the NHL yet as well. Uh, and he said he sees Harris as being a, a player who would have good value in the trade market, and he sees him you know, developing into possibly a solid top four defenseman. He's just not necessarily sure that he's going to be able to do that with Montreal, given all the other young D in depth that they've built up there on the blue line. So he can see him maybe being a trade piece that they use uh, to maybe, you know, facilitate some other moves in the future here or in the not too distant future. So it doesn't mean that they're, you know, actively shopping or trying to trade Harris at this point. I don't think that's the case. Uh, Ingles is just saying that he's not sure that he has a long future with Montreal that he might kind of, get boxed out there possibly and we'll see that the value is good on him because he's so uh, you know well valued around the league for his potential and it could be a player they decide to move to find some other pieces to help with their rebuild now some other i guess uh, it started off as maybe looking like a potential trade rumor but now it's like a lot of questions up in the air um but this all kind of got started here in the last hour. I noticed some on online on Twitter that Carter Hart as uh, the Philadelphia Flyers has taken his Instagram account, which is his main social media, and has gone private. And there's now no mention of the Philadelphia Flyers on the uh, description or bio either. So I noticed that a lot of Philadelphia reporters and fans were talking about this on Twitter and kind of getting their attention. Not even sure how, who noticed it first or what have you. I just noticed this in the past hour. And a lot of people were talking, like, okay, well, this must, because he's been in the rumor mill as per a potential trade. Uh, we know what the Flyers have done with their other goalies in the organization. And to be honest, it wouldn't be shocking if they do move Carter Hart. There's been a lot of talk around it. And there was even some talk earlier in the offseason that things were actually getting close to a potential trade. At least that's what was being speculated. Um, so, you know, why all of a sudden, close to camp on a late on a Thursday night, would all this kind of change with social media? Well, more people got doing some more digging, and he's not the only player in the NHL that suddenly turned his social media to private. And there's a connection here. Now, um, if you take a look at some of the other players who suddenly now have their Instagrams on private, it also includes Brett Howden of the Vegas Golden Knights, Dylan Dubé of the Calgary Flames, uh, Jonah Gancevich, uh, and Tyler Steenbergen as well. That's five NHL players. Now, they all were on the 2018 World Junior team that's been under investigation. I'm not saying that they're the five players that are reportedly getting suspended. I'm not trying to break any news here and say that I've cracked the code or cracked the case. It just seems really weird that all of a sudden, late on a Thursday night, you know, when we're supposed to be getting this news here any time, that all of a sudden this has transpired. Now, there was also some uh, weird stuff going on with the NHL website. And apparently on the Montreal website earlier, it showed Carter Hart and Nick Delorier from Philly showing up on Montreal's roster. So originally, but I think that's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's been since been corrected. Uh, I haven't gone back to look again, but I know that um, it's got people talking, wondering if there was a trade brewing between Montreal and Philadelphia, and that was going to be announced. But then after more digging, and I know some other people were making mention of a few of the things on, on Twitter, that 
other players are doing this too. And I've checked other, there's other members from that team that have not done it. Uh, but we had heard back, when was it? I want to say it was late July or early August. I can't even remember now. Andy Strickland was the reporter who said he was told that there was going to be five NHL players facing suspension based on the investigation outcome from that World Junior team. These five players are all on there, and you know, obviously if they're suspended, we don't know what level of suspension they were possibly facing, and we don't really know. I mean, that was just what reporters were hearing. So, you know, is there a trade brewing? Is there something else going on? Is this World Junior stuff that has just not been announced yet? I don't know, but if, if this is the World Junior thing, then, then there's a lot of different teams impacted here. Like I said, we had heard there was going to be some names that are, you know, fairly significant to their team. And you could say that Carter Hart, Brett Howden, and Dylan Dubé specifically would fit that mold. So I don't know. I mean, I checked Alex Formanton because as much as um, that whole situation has been really weird. I mean, Alex Formanton was an RFA after, like before the start of last season. So he already has been on a contract for, what is it now? I guess about a year and a half or something like that. And Ottawa just couldn't come to terms, wouldn't sign him. Like, it's just bizarre. And he ended up never got traded and went overseas. It, the whole Formanton situation with the Sens just doesn't make sense. Everybody has assumed, and all people don't always want to say it, that they knew something and that he must have been somehow connected to this investigation and that maybe he was going to be getting himself in trouble. I don't know. I know there's a lot of people out there like to point the finger on social media and say, oh, Drake Batherson is on that team too. He's going to jail. I don't know how many times I've seen that. And completely unjustified. We don't know that Drake did anything. We don't know any of these players did anything for that matter. And it's really, you know, boiled my blood seeing people dragging players' names through the mud when they don't know anything. And I'm not saying these guys are guilty because I don't know that. All I'm saying is, there's a connection that all of their social media statuses have all changed. And it's just really weird how all within now could it have changed before this? I mean, I follow most of these players on social media, um, but I don't look at their accounts every day. So I don't really know exactly when it changes the thing. Right. So it's just bizarre. And, you know, is there trades coming? Is it connected to that? I don't know. Maybe it'll be nothing. It just seems bizarre. It seems weird. And I wouldn't honestly put it past the NHL if we got World Junior Investigation News like on a Friday, you know, in September, right before the NFL season starts. Like they like to bury stuff in a news cycle so that it doesn't get a little, as little attention as possible. So I I don't know. It just, just seems weird. I thought I'd bring it up, see what everybody else thinks. Uh, is Carter Hart, you know, the main one here has removed his affiliation from his team. Um, is there a trade coming? What is it? Let me know what you think. Maybe we'll get more news on this in the next little while. And we'll be able to clarify what in the heck is going on with all their social media Go on private. Let me know your thoughts, and we'll talk about it further down in the comments. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.